Hello and welcome back to Soul Search Sunday with Johnny Tiger. On May 16, 2021. In this world we live in, advice comes cheaply. Now, some people who has hired me uh, for counseling um, or for other kind of advisory role, or anyone who has ever attended counseling or uh, needed an advisor in their life may argue and they may beg to differ and say, no, that's not cheap at all. It's really expensive. Well, that's it's because you were paying for professional advices. But if you just want advices, anyone, anyone, you go into Google and uh, ask a question. Go onto Quora, ask a question. Go onto oexpert.com, ask a question. Totally free of charge. You don't know uh, the credential of the person on the other side who's going to be answering your question. You don't know if they are really what, who they say they are, if they really are a doctor or a lawyer, but you're going to get a response and in most cases, really good advices. Most, most of the time, are very well written advices. Depending on your preferences, you can even go down to the street corner, to the pubs, to the restaurant, and just randomly find a stranger and ask for their advice. And um, I almost guarantee you, if you, especially if you are female, uh, 9 out of 10, you are going to find some very eager um, male and sometimes female strangers are just eager to help you out with your uh, plan for your life, with your uh, life's purposes, and with your uh, dilemma. So all that is to say that uh, advices come cheap. In this society we live in, people are very free with their opinions, with their criticism, with their solutions, especially here in North America, especially in a, a Western society where uh, freedom of speech has been abused to hell and back. Now, if you live in a country where freedom of speech is not so uh, easily obtained, or doesn't exist at all, then uh, getting advice might be a little bit more tricky. But even uh, if you live in a place like China, where it's strictly communism, and if you live in North Korea, uh, chances are that unless you're asking about some really sensitive government-related, politically-motivated subject, uh, if you just want to know uh, your husband's cheating on you, what should you do? Your boyfriend cheating on you, what should you do? You can still find a whole lot of people ready to give you uh, advices on how to handle the situation. But these advices are not always good. They're not always sought through, they're not always uh, accurate, they may be well-meaning, the intention may be good, but even some of our most common traditional uh, nuggets of wisdom, most cliché of clichés, are mistaken, and just overall lousy advice for people. Today I want to uh, talk about three of these cliches, these uh, uh, nuggets of wisdom that I personally have problems with. I personally find it's repulsive, it's repugnant, it's, if, uh, it's obnoxious and just uh, bordering on idiocy. The first of these three is and I, I'm sure everyone's heard this one. Honesty is the best policy. Honesty is the best policy. Now, I have talked about this in several episodes of Soul Search Sunday in the past, so I will not uh, dwell on this one as much. But 
anyone with uh, any kind of social uh, experience, uh, anyone with an extensive social network with uh, experience with relationship uh, would know that, no, honestly, not, not always the best policy. At the, be at the most, you can say that carefully tailored, carefully worded, very diplomatic honesty might be a good policy. But even that, sometimes you really just have to uh, be dishonest about something. Anyone who's ever got asked by their wife or girlfriend, hey, do I look fat? Do you, do, uh, am, I, am I too fat? Uh, do I look fat in the dress? Anyone who's ever got asked by, uh, with that kind of question, know or should know that this is one of those situations where honesty is not the best policy. Uh, in fact, uh, in this, these cases, uh, no matter how carefully you word your answer, no matter how diplomatic you want to be, you probably just want to leave honesty out of it. You probably just want to come out with a big smile, give her a big hug, and say, no, no, you don't look fat at all. If you want to avoid a lot of drama afterward, any female, any female who's ever had this conversation where their boyfriend or their husband asked them, hey, do, uh, do guys with six packs a big bicep turn you on? Or uh, do, do you think uh, Justin Bieber uh, looks better than I do? And uh, yeah, again, one of those situations where you either want to detour around and not answer it altogether, uh, or you just want to lie about it. Because uh, if you are honest, and even if you are very careful, very, very diplomatic, most likely you are not going to avoid some kind of drama and backlashes after that. Okay. So there are a lot I can I can stand here all night and name instances where honesty is just counterproductive uh, for the uh, well-being of all party involved. So sometimes, sometimes you just need to uh, put a ring check on that. Now, I'm not saying that we should all be lying, cheating, trickery, uh, 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 conniving, scheming bastards. But I'm saying that if you go into this world operating under the illusion that honesty is the best policy all the time, then you might be in for some very rough ride uh, in socializing and building a meaningful relationship and all that stuff. The second one of these non, uh, often heard nuggets of wisdom is money can't buy happiness. Money can't buy happiness. You see, usually, usually the people I hear that say money can't buy happiness are people who have some money. And it's usually people who don't have to uh, buy a $3 uh, piece of meat uh, because that's all they can afford. Th these are people who can't, uh, who don't have to eat meat only once a week because that's all they can afford. These are people who don't have to struggle to pay rent and then worry about what am I going to eat for the next five days until I get my paycheck or whatever. Uh, th these are people who are not suffering because they don't have money. Can money buy happiness? Maybe not, maybe not. Uh, although I have a, a personal, I have personal experience with a lot of money in my family when I was growing up and was I happy? Yeah, I was actually very happy as a child until all the uh, abuses and all that nonsense kicked in. But uh, prior to nine years old, I was a really happy child. I could have anything I wanted. I could have any food, any time, any, any way I wanted. I could have any toy, any time, anywhere, as much as I wanted. I was a happy child. Um, now, as an adult, what I want, what I desire, obviously, is different. 
Uh, but I am not going to stand here and say money can't buy happiness. I, I'm at the most I'm going to say is I don't know. You know, make me really, really rich, and I'll give you the answer. Make me really, really rich, and、uh, I, I hope I can find out. But、uh, from where I stand,、uh, which usually I'm on the opposite end of rich, usually I'm closer to the end of having to worry about rent, having to worry about cable bill, having to worry about、uh, buying really cheap food, even though I'm craving that ribeye steak. No, I'm still going to buy that cheap. Uh, ch- chicken drumstick on sale, and I end up having to eat chicken drumstick for the rest of the month. I'm closer to that spectrum. So from where I'm standing, I'm going to tell you that、uh, when I hear people say money can't buy happiness, I find that a very presumptuous, very、uh, selfish, very self-centered kind of statement. Because、uh, you might want to come and try being、uh, scared of、uh, not having. Place to live. You might want to come and try to uh, uh, worry about food and stuff like that before you tell me that the money you have is not making your life a little bit happier. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is because I know. I know if I have a little bit more money, not a lot. I'm not. I'm not a person with a lot of ambition. But you know, if I have,、uh, let's say, just a thousand dollar more a month, a five hundred dollar more a month. It makes me very, very happy. Trust me, I know how to make myself happy. I know how to use some money to make myself happy. So, money can buy happiness. Is to me one of the、uh, biggest crock of BS that gets served around in our society today. The third one. And this one is actually what motivated the、uh, the topic today.、Uh, when I gave my speech to the organization called Blind Beginning, shout out to Blind Beginning. They do wonderful work here in British Columbia, serving blind children and their parents, helping them、uh, deal with education and other challenges that may result in parents having to raise blind children. Like、uh, I I can't say enough good things about Blind Beginning.、Uh, I personally don't work very good with children, so I, I admire them even more because they are so good at what they do.、Uh, Blind Beginning had me do a speech for them earlier this week, and one of the questions I got asked was, "How do we deal as blind people? How do we deal with people who、uh, tell us that we can't do things because we're blind? How do we deal with that kind of negative?" Uh, society's perception on blind people. My answer to that person, and my answer to everybody who wonder about that, you don't even have to be blind. You can be a minority or uh, uh, have other kind of disability. Okay, if you face people's perception,、uh, I'm going to guarantee that you have heard this multiple times when someone tell you. Well, what other people think that's their problem. Now you just be you. It's okay. That is a horrible, horrible, horrible piece of advice for people. Just be you. Other people's the,、uh, problem with you is not your problem. Really, one of the worst advices that people can give to try to help another person. Does it make you feel good at the very moment when you hear this? Yeah, sure. It make you feel really good, but if you follow through with its advice, it's going to ruin your chance of ever get out of this situation for the rest of your life. Why? Because human beings, we are social animal. We are social. We are not meant to be alone. We are not meant to operate alone. Now, some of us can. Some of us. Uh, can actually go into the woods, go into the jungle, and never take, see a shower, never see shampoo again, and we can survive fine.、Uh, not me, but、uh, you know, some some of some some people can.、Uh, they can just live out there、uh, without ever interacting with people. They're fine. But generally speaking, human beings not meant to do that. We need a society. This is why we are so strong. This is why we have not not just villages. Okay, no. Look at look at human beings' development. We don't. We didn't stop. 
at family. We didn't stop at village. We went on after village. We ended up with counties, we ended up with cities, we ended up with states, and provinces, and we ended up with countries. This is just how human beings are meant to do things. Biologically, genetically, we are social animals. We need each other. So when you are a social animal, when you need each other, you need each other's approval. You can't just be you and not be concerned with what other people think of you. Because if you do that long enough, you'll find yourself、uh, ostracized. You'll find yourself isolated. You'll find that suddenly you only have yourself, or at the most, you only have maybe two or three people who really understand you, and no one else. You can't get anything done that way. So, what did I tell the questioner, the person who asked the question? I said instead of thinking that other what other people think is not your problem, you need to think how can I prove to them they are wrong? How can I prove to them they are wrong? How can I make them see things my way? And we live in a very magical day and age, right? Thirty years ago, forty years ago, this would be almost impossible to accomplish. Thirty years ago, forty years ago, if some you if you go out and want to do some kind of a work, and someone say you can't,、uh, that's basically the end of the conversation. You can't. And if you run into more and more people who say you can't, well, then you just can't get that done. Not so nowadays. Nowadays we have a new tool that anyone, anyone in the civilized part of the world have access to. This is called social media. And when someone say that you can't do something, when someone say that you are a bad person, when someone say that you are evil or、uh, whatever, whatever the negative that they want to say about you, it's perfectly in your power to change that. Use your imagination, use your time, use your keyboard, use your phone. Make a difference. When you make enough of a difference on social media, it will translate over to real life. As a blind martial artist, I can't even begin to tell you how many times, how many years, I heard people tell me that it cannot be done. Blind people can't strike. Blind people can't fight. Blind people can't. Hit their opponent. Blind people can't、uh, survive being in a fight with a sighted person. Yada yada yada. But anyone who even doubts that, all I have to do is give them the link to this YouTube channel. All I have to do is give them the link to my Facebook profile, and very quickly that will change their mind. There are so many videos, footages, speeches. Articles out there are me proving that it's all possible. That it's not even a question of doubt anymore. At this point, if anyone who watch my material and still say it can't be done, then that's simple stubbornness and stupidity. It no longer have to do it with any fact or、uh, proofs or evidence. So use your power. Use what's available to you. And change what you want. Change, change that perception. Change people's perception. But don't fool yourself into thinking that it's okay to just be you, and what other people think don't matter. It's not cool because you need other people in your life. Thank you for checking out today's Soul Search Sunday. We'll be back again tomorrow for Music Monday. For now, have a good night.